Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at a problem from the CCC, the Canadian Computing Competition. It's the J3 2013 and it's called from 1987 to 2013. So let's look at the problem and I'll show you my solution. It's already written out here because I don't want to write it. I'll just explain what I did here. Uh, but let's look at the problem first. Uh, so you might be surprised to know that, let me, so that you're not distracted, I'm just going to go ahead and do this here. Um, uh, you might be surprised to know that uh, 2013 is the first year since 1987 with distinct digit, digits. The year 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 each have distinct digits. 2012 does not have distinct digits since the digit 2 is repeated twice. Okay, uh, Given a year, what is the next year with a distinct digit? So that's a pretty straightforward question. So you're given a year and what is the next year? Um, that follows that has distinct digits that none of the four digits or three digits or whatever repeat all digits in that year are um, distinct so the input specification will be a number anywhere from 0 to uh, 10,000 right and um, representing the starting year the output will also be a, uh, will also be an integer it's a digit which is the next year after this year uh, with a distinct digit. So as an example, if you're given 1987, the correct answer is 2013. Because 1988 wouldn't be distinct, there would be two eights. 1989 wouldn't be distinct because there would be two nines. Uh, 1990 wouldn't be distinct, there would be two, 90s, uh, two nines. 1991, same thing. Throughout the 90s, it'll be two nines. Once you hit 2000, it'll be 2003. So two zeros, the whole thousands, all the way to 2009 repeats. 2010 is no good as well because you've got um, 2010, zero, zero, so two zeros. 2011 is no good because you've got two ones. 2012, you've got two twos. And 2013 is actually distinct. Cool. If I were to give you 999, the year 999, the next year is 1023. So how would I solve this? Um, so this is probably not my proud my proudest solution in that it's a brute force solution. It's just a dirty hack, uh, but it works and works flawlessly. So let me share with you what I did here. Um, it might look complicated. Let me actually go ahead and make this a bit bigger just so that you could see. Um, I'm going to go presentation dark, yeah. Um, but it works and it works really well. So let me explain to you the variables that I have in your... So I created a function here called find out answer, and I'm taking an integer. Um, so I'm taking parameter, year, integer, and I'm returning an integer. And I've created quite a few variables here. So the first thing is I made a copy of whatever the year is, but I incremented it. Why? Because we know that we don't start checking until next year, right? So if I'm given 1987, I'm not going to check if 1987 is distinct. Obviously it is. We're checking starting next year. So input one copy is going to be whatever the year is plus one. String version, so this is how I approach this. I work really well with strings. Um, I'm strong in terms of working for, with strings. So what I did is I take this integer and I convert it to a string. So the string version variable is essentially the, um, the string version of that number. So 1987, I made it into a string. Then what I did to the string is I'm going to put that string in, in a variable called all characters. And essentially, it's an array of strings. It's an array of characters, but it's an array of strings that essentially will have the four elements, one, nine, eight, seven, inside the array. And the final answer is the final answer that I'm going to get, uh, you know, the next year that's, um, that's, uh, that's distinct, which I'll, which I'll obviously output. Distinct number found is a Boolean that will break my while loop, and distinct counter is an integer that will, you'll understand why I use this, it's hard to explain, but you'll see why I use this. So essentially it's 0, 1, or 2, and once it hits 2, I know that I've found the answer. So I've got a mini for loop here that essentially takes in, uh, that uh, that traverses through the characters in the string version. So 1987, it's, an, uh, it's a string. So I traverse through that string, and I add it to my all characters array, which is empty here. So by the end of this for loop, I'm going to have a variable all characters, which is an array um, that will have element 1, element 9, element 8, element 7 um, in that array as strings. Cool. Or characters, rather. Anyways, so that that's obvious. And this is where all the magic happens. And this is like really ugly because I've got for loop, for loop, if loop, and a for loop in there. Not the most efficient, but actually it doesn't run that many times to figure out the answer, so it's half decent. So let's check this out. So I've got a, a while loop, and essentially this while loop will continuously loop 
until uh, distinct number found is true. So, uh, so as long as it's false, it will continue looping. So what do I do here? The first thing I do is distinct number zero, I change it to a one, and you'll see why that is in a second. So I increment, I incremented by one. You'll see, you'll see why that in a second. So I've got an out, outer loop here. So let's go ahead and do this outer loop. Um, and in the outer loop, um, I'm, um, um, uh, I'm iterating through zero all the way to the string version dot count. So the string version dot count, again, I can't assume that there's going to be four numbers because the input could be up to 10,000, which means five numbers. So it could be the year 9,900 and, you know, um, well, actually that would, it could be 10,000, right? So that would be five digits as opposed to 1987, which is four digits. So I'm going to the count. So in our case, it's um, it's 1987. So let's use that example, right? So I'm going from zero, which is the first element, to the count, not going to the count. So I'm going from zero to three because 1987 has four values, uh, four elements rather. So I'm going element one, element two, element uh, element zero. Sorry, excuse me, element zero, element one, element two, element three. So I'm uh, so I'm iterating through the four elements, and in the two, I'm iterating same thing to the count except I'm not starting at zero, I'm starting at one. So I'm starting at whatever index is, plus one. Not really one, I'm actually starting one ahead of the index, right, and I'm calling that index two. So here I'm going from element zero to element three, and here I'm going from element one to element three. And inside this inner loop, let's call this inner loop, inside this inner loop, I do a simple check. Uh, if all characters index, so in this case, element zero, so in our case, 1987, it would be one. And in this case, index plus one would be one nine, right? So this would be a nine. So this index would be one and index two would be uh, element two, which would be a nine. So if all characters index, which is a one, is equal equal to uh, the nine, then do the following, right? And obviously they're not. so since they're not the one in, uh, uh, so 1988 would actually be the thing, not 1987. So then since the one and the nine aren't identical, this never executes, right? So this whole if statement does not execute. So nothing happens here, okay? Um, so this if statement doesn't execute. So we go back here and it's still false. This changes to obviously one, this changes to two. So now we're comparing the nine and the eight. Again, this doesn't execute. And then we'll compare the eight and an eight, and this does execute. And if this if statement ever execute, it means it failed. This year is not distinct. And obviously 1988 is not distinct because there's an eight and an eight, and eventually we'll see that there's an eight here and there's an eight here. So this will execute. And if this if statement execute, we know that it's a fail. So what do we do? I go to input one copy, which is the year, and I increment it by one. So it'll be 1989, right? Because I got to check the next year. And then I have to do this whole thing again, uh, where I take that number, I convert it to a string, put in the string version, remove the array of all characters, and then do this thing again right here, where I take that string and cut it up into characters, into simple um, characters, and put it in this array called all characters. Cool. Now the distinct zero here, I use one and zero, knowing that this is, uh, this is, uh, I haven't solved it yet. As soon as it hits two, I know that I found an answer. So as soon as this if statement occurs, right, it ends right here. As soon as this if statement occurs, I change the distinct counter to zero. And then when I loop back, this is still false. I change that back to one. And you'll see why is from zero to one. So I continue doing this when 1989, it doesn't work, and this happens again and again and again and again and again. Eventually, eventually I'll hit 2013. Let's see what happens in 2013. So 2013, the first number is two, and the second number is zero. Obviously, we go through it. It doesn't, it, this if statement doesn't work, right? And then we do the next, we compare zero and one. If statement doesn't occur because they're not equal, then we compare one and three. Oh, it doesn't. It's, they're not equal, so this if statement never occurs, right? So since this if statement never occurs, I have this if statement. If distinct counter is two, then do the following. Well, what happens is this. This still doesn't execute yet, but we do this again. And since we don't increment the input, it's still 2013 again, except distinct counter now is at two. 
and we go through we do the last number the distinct uh, value twice and we do all of this again and this still doesn't execute obviously except this time this if statement will execute which is a two and if this executes we know that distinct number is found we change it to true so this uh, so this will break the while loop and I'll take whatever number I have in input one copy because I know that's the distinct value at this point and put it in final answer and return final answer. So check it out. So I have input one here. Input one is 999 and the answer is 2013. If I change input one to 1987 and I run this, I will get 2013. And this works flawlessly. So. My method is sort of like a, a brute force, change it to strings and take the string, chop it up into characters and put it in an array um, of, of um, an array of strings or an array of characters, whatever, and literally check every character in that array one by one until I get an answer. So that's my solution. If you know of a more efficient solution, which I'm sure you guys could find, uh, please uh, hit me up in the comments and don't forget to share and uh, like the uh, the video and please subscribe helps me out a lot thank you very much and have a wonderful day